you know, I'm trying. Bonnie, I, I mean, you still, you're working out, you're taking care of yourself, you're beautiful, you got the daughter. But once, <laughs> for me, it was throwing the kid into the mix. That's what really got to me, that I didn't want to be a comic that died and then they had to learn about who I was right. or somebody else. Right, oh my God. I already got, I already was involved in a marriage that I don't see my kid. I have no communication with my kid since she's been 17, 16. And she, How come? Me and the wife just didn't, didn't click. And, you know, I think about it with this one. I go, would I would have trusted me with a kid 25 years ago? No wonder. I wouldn't have trusted me. Mm -hmm. I was nuts when I was with that kid. The kid was five. And that's when I moved away, when she was five. And then we just broke. It just broke. It just something that broke. It's like I gave up a life to get a life as a yeah. comedian. Yeah. It's, it was hard for a few years. I, I accepted it. I reached out a thousand times. It's a different world. And I live with that now. So I didn't want this to happen with her. No. So now I over, overextend myself with her. Because I see it's the little things. Back then, it was, I thought it was based on money and doing shit with your kid. Your kid just wants to lay on your Your leg. kid just wants your attention. attention. That's, it. That's it. They That's want it. to see you light up when you when, when they walk in the room. That's it. That's it. My whole fucking wall is. And an iPhone X. And yeah. that is it. That's no, all they want. My wife won't give her a phone. My wife lets her play with her phone. <laughs> yeah. And she texts me at night. Like yeah. she'll, she'll text me from her bed, hearts and pictures oh, of her sweet. doing shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm at that level now where I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in for Sunday dinners. Yeah. There's a rule in my house: we got to be in for Sunday dinner and eat like a family, and then I watch my 60 minutes. Well, I feel I think there's a thing where people, you know, it's all about making it big, but really, I honestly think the sweet spot is making it medium, because when you if you're if you're going to be a star, people don't realize the amount of fucking effort it takes to make it to that level and to maintain it at that level. You've got to be working and thinking about it all the time. And so if you want to have a life where, you know, like you have a kid and you have family and you have these like, you know, actual real relationships and, and um, you know, you, you really, there should be more. Everyone always says in this country, like dream big, dream big. It should be like, you know, try to pay your mortgage and then spend some time with your family. That's, I don't know. I mean, it sounds cheesy, but it's... No, it's not cheesy. It's really... Uh, let me explain something to you. I love that nobody knows who the fuck I am. I love it. I love it that... People I hate to break it to you. No. I don't know if you know how many Twitter followers you have. No, but people don't know who the fuck I am. They've, you know, Half of those Twitter followers have come and gone. they moved on to other comments by now <laughs> and shit like that. But it's so weird how... Uh, I couldn't imagine doing a Louis C.K or Kevin Hart, that's not for me. Right. I, I even feel uncomfortable, like the Wilbur Theater is as big as I like it. That's, anything after that, it's too echoey, I feel the people uncomfortable. If it was up to me, I would, I would just do 200 seat rooms. Right, of course. Where well, I could fucking be I don't huge understand. in there. Yeah. I'm huge in a 250 I seat room. I, I can't I'm imagine huge. doing 20,000, what is, I mean, I guess I don't. So I get it. I get it. Like they say, if you do the garden anyway, you don't make no money. Don't make no money. At the end of the night, when you add up the tickets and the money, the union takes half of it. It's New York City, baby girl. Wow. They want, you know, 50 just for you walking in there. Then it's security, then it's advertising. Oh, yeah. I guess so. I guess so. When the people do the garden, like, they don't do it. Uh, they do it for the, to right, say, to I, did, say the I garden. did the garden. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's one of those things where, you know, you need to do, like, 19 fucking shows. Like, when I was going to do New York Comedy Festival, they made me an offer. There was no money there. Right. I couldn't believe it. Like, there was no money. Like, they were like, 25000 for advertising. Wow. What are you talking about? What are you advertising? Mars. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you sending signals to? Get in Puerto Rican with little flags. Right, right, you know, the, right. That, that shit they did in the <laughs> 70s when you were stuck out on a boat. I don't give a fuck. 25 grand, you know. <laughs> so you got to think of all this shit. <laughs> Puerto Rican with a flag. <laughs> you, know, you don't remember those guys? They would stand out there and give each other signals. <gasps> all that shit went to the garbage. I'm an old man. I want to know what happened to Morse code. I was tremendous at Morse code. <laughs> I was Morse motherfuckers in Australia. Tick, 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 tick. I knew Morse code when I was a kid. That's I, amazing. I was better at Morse code. For what code reason? To, to talk to people. Who? 
You I don't know. They would take things back. I don't know. I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. In case you were kidnapped Isn't that by from the, the Titanic? Isn't that... What they, you, you had a Morse code thing in your house? Yeah. You send fucking signals to people. Oh, my you, God. You fuck with people. How old are you? Are you That's I'm amazing. that old. <laughs> I'm that fucking old that I knew how to send more signals. When you were in the 70s, they taught you how to do that shit in grammar school, I think. Really? Yeah, dot, 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 dot. You learned how to do the flags in case your boat, your boat broke down. You knew how to send signals, how to do SOS. I can't even imagine you on a boat. Yeah, yeah. You got to learn all that shit as a kid in New York City. But I was a fucking the king of Morse code. I could send out fucking... Do you still know it, you think? No, I forgot oh. all that shit. And I used to know Pig Latin, too, when I was a kid. Oh, my, my God, taught, we used to speak... My mother taught me how to chiti, chita, chito, all that shit. Lee, isn't it you just added L-Y to the end? Something or, fucking crazy A-Y-N. in Spanish. No, but yeah. it was Spanish-wise. So oh, would, you're doing you're doing, Spanish, doing Spanish pig Latin. Pig Latin. Whoa, oh my god. That's chiti, another. chita, chito, some fucking shit. I was all confused as a kid, sending more signals to people. Morse fucking code. That was how bad to the bone I was. Tick, tick, tick. There was like a whole little chart. <laughs> and you would just fuck with people and send them Morse codes. <laughs> they couldn't trace your calls. You know, there was no call oh waiting. Oh my god. There was no nothing. This was straight up. People would say, <laughs> I mean, we used to have one of those walkie talkies where we'd sometimes get somebody on there. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the Pittsburgh funny bone? Yeah. The guy was a fucking pervert. Yeah. He was creepy. He had lawn furniture for fucking. Uh, he had sued the funny bone and broke away from them so he could do whatever the fuck he wanted. Oh, to. I didn't know that. So the whole bar was pictures of naked women, <laughs> you know, artistically taken by him. <laughs> but you could tell this motherfucker was Harvey Jr. Because he had a couple of them that had bushes and shit. But this guy. I only went there with Rich. You only but, went there with Rich? Okay. Yeah. He had a room. So, like, Thursday, he was too cheap to pay the radio. But one guy liked them. And they put you, like, AM Sports. And then Friday, you went to his house. And you you got a CB. No. Dog, he had something like ham radio. This is 1995. Oh, when the Longest crazy, Yard but... came out. I probably went there from 95 to 98. What like, is he doing on a CB radio? He would sit there, and I remember I told him, I said, what time are we he doing? He had the first this? podcast. He had the first podcast. <laughs> oh and didn't know it. Like truckers and stuff? Something. And only three or four people would listen to it. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the truth. In his basement. And we would sit there, and it was like, it would come on AM, and nobody would listen to it. Because I asked him, like, anybody would listen to him. People were like, no, it's terrible. He's terrible. He doesn't know what he's doing. But he, I remember the, one of the last times I went there, we got into a fight over that p- podcast because I said, listen, we got to go eat. And he's like, I told you. And I go, I don't give a fuck what you told me. I took the earphones off. I said, throw me out. I don't give a fuck. Get me the fuck out of here. I'm 40 years old on a CB ham radio to doing a fucking, there wasn't even a podcast. And it was 96, guys, 97, 98. I was like, get me the fuck out of here. And that was it. After that, he never booked me again. And then I heard he sold the club years later or something. Yeah, he had his own little radio station downstairs in his house. And he would talk to you about the funny bone, his pictures and shit. He was a creepy fucking dude, man. I just want to know what you said to those poor people on Morse code. You probably, I can just imagine them on the other end. Who the fuck knows? They would just get (laughs) signals from me and panic. This is for official business. (laughs) I used to fuck with people at every age. I was looking at my daughter. I'm looking at my daughter last night. She's five and a half. She'll bet she's the cutest thing. And, and I was thinking about when I was doing a five and a half. <laughs> I lived on 88th Street. And my mother would give Do you me, remember yeah. yourself at five and a half? Well, this could only be five and a half or six and a half. Right. Because I was still crazy. It was before, <laughs> I, it was before I got hit in the head with the lunchbox. I got hit in the head with the lunchbox in Central Park. But we lived on 88th Street. And my mother had a jukebox at the bar. Yeah. So she would give me all the old records that they would take out of the bar. And and there was, and, and still to this day, people send me pictures of 205 West 88th Street. It's the corner building, but next to it was a parking garage. And we would play stickball on there and, you know, handball. And there was a sign that said fallout shelter. And we used it as a basketball thing, a hoop. You know, this is like. It was the, a really a fallout shelter? Yeah, in the 80s, in the 70s. When I got here from Cuba, everybody had a fallout shelter because. You know, the Russians. Right, gonna, right. Uh, b- invade us. So every building would have a sign in front of it that said fallout shelter. And it would have like a radioactive sign. <laughs> and that meant in case of something, you'd go downstairs right, you go to the down. basement, lock yourself in. And they had like tang and vegetables in a can. Right, they're, they're ready. Yeah, for... and then you come out when the apocalypse is over. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, so they had fallout shelters. And I'll never forget that. There was a garage and the kids would play stickball. 
But the way my building was shaped, it was like it went up three stories and on the third floor where I lived, now I could see my neighbors that lived on the other side of the hallway. We could see that yard where they would play. I could see them and hear them, but they couldn't see me. So they'd be playing stickball, and I'd take those fucking 45s, those singles, <laughs> and I'd whip them out the window. <laughs> and by the time they got to the fucking bottom level, they're like a boomerang. Oh, you God, that could, could decapitate oh somebody. Oh, my God. I would... I'm surprised you're like, odd job from 007. I'm surprised you didn't take anyone's head off. <laughs> I would sit there for like a, for like a three-minute run. I would just throw out singles out of the oh window. Oh, my God. And the kids would yell, who the fuck is doing that? Stop it. And all of a sudden, you would be like, Right into the oh, flow yeah. like One time I went down, and I would do it, and then go downstairs and ask what happened. What's oh. all, what's all, <laughs> the gaslighting them. Like, what's all the commotion about? Some fucking... Somebody's throwing singles out the oh record. Oh, my God. And they God. hit me in the head. I go, yeah, there's a crazy guy living up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That was such a fun. I remember I shit my pants one time. And, and you were five there. and a half? You yeah, Five and a half or six, and I would not wipe my ass. Oh. So my mom would take my underwears and staple them to the front of my door so I wouldn't bring my friends over. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to wipe my ass because I wouldn't wipe my ass. And she'd say, how do you not wipe your ass? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I forget. Some tough love there. And then she would go, okay, next time you fucking come up with a dirty underwear, I'm hanging on the wall. I thought she was fucking around. Oh, she my God. She stapled it on the top of the wall. That's such uh, a mom thing. How long did it stay up there for? Like for a week. Oh, and every time I shit my pants, she would staple them up against the wall <laughs> like, a, like a trophy for me to look at. It. How did you learn to wipe your ass? <laughs> <laughs> not that. Not like that. I can't. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.